The honor is ours to see you guys work. Uh, can you hear us and tell us about your case? Yeah, it's perfect. So uh, it's a really great pleasure to be here in Monaco. Uh, first time for me. So thanks to Camille Verlin, which is uh, the host. Yes. And, <laughs> Welcome um, in all, Monaco. Thank you. And all the team uh, in Monaco. And I have the pleasure today to work with my friend Arun. And uh, we will present you the case. And then we will discuss. Yes. Sounds good. Uh, let me introduce the team today. We have uh, Alain and uh, other side, uh, Valérie, Jérôme, and the anesthetist is uh, Julien, and uh, Gadi Gafari for Ivis commentator. Uh, next slide, please. Today is uh, one of my favorite patients. It's uh, Mr. S, uh, 78 years old. Uh, we have um, all the medical history with stent a lady uh, two years ago, and uh, it's a current smoker. He have uh, chest pain uh, actually, and uh, MRI adenosine uh, show reversible inferior ischemia. Uh, he have uh, also peripheral peripheral vascular disease with stent and bypass. So today we make a two puncture uh, femoral uh, but with the echographia. Next slide, please. On the coronography, you can uh, show uh, total occlusion of uh, right coronary with a blunt cap. We discuss after. Next slide, please. On the left side, so it's uh, before uh, sensing of like LAD and uh, diagonal. You can show the collateral. Next slide. Okay, we discuss. So LED yeah. were, were, was fixed uh, with uh, open it, so the 15 uh, length stents or 18. So uh, I think that the first septal is just under the strut, but the second septal is uh, free of uh, strut. Huh? So uh, the setup, uh, Arun, we decided to work with a 2.7 French. So it's uh, fortunately we, we succeed okay. on femoral because there was no radial pulse anymore. And so it was brachial or, or, uh, or femoral, femoral, but uh, yeah. okay. So we have two, two, seven uh, French, amplats left uh, for the right coronary and EBU 3.75 for the left coronary. So we will show you the, the dual injection. So it, um, it was not so easy to intubate the right, but yeah, this is uh, the right injection. So you can see and appreciate the, the stump. So it's in between blunt or tapered. Uh, we can see some uh, shadow after the, the stump. And this is a bilateral. And LAO, and this is now LAO cranial. So you can appreciate also that uh, there is some calcification on the right and a disease on the uh, distal landing zone. It's a long CTO, I think it's uh, yeah. around 30, 35. Eh? And then we, we, we did a areo shot to appreciate the, the collaterals. collaterals. Okay, guys, so uh, we, we elaborate uh, with Arun our, uh, our strategy, but maybe you want to discuss it before, yeah, yeah. and then Arun will, uh, will explain what we, what we will try. All right, so Chris, what's your thought? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, you've got, as we mentioned, good collaterals. I think the, the important thing to notice, even in that second and even third septal, there is some osteal disease. So I think, and the angle is a little bit of a, um, uh, you might struggle a bit to get into that, but I think once you get into there, if your microcatheter follows easily, you should be fine. Otherwise, you may even need to just predilate that osteum a bit. Um, but I think you should be able to get retrogradely and, uh, 
um, and see where you get up to. And then I think if you knuckle retrogradely, you'll be able to then puncture towards your knuckle um, from your anti-grade. There is a little sort of almost stump or a little rat tail that wants to appear. So if you want to prod anti-gradely, you might actually get into that little, um, that little stump and go in the right direction as well. So, Carlo, would you rather, uh, I mean, prepare first to integrate cap here or uh, also probably just go retro and then knock up? Yeah, I mean, of course, you don't want to just go astray and uh, ruin your case uh, uh, from the start. Having said that, uh, a careful attempt with, you know, a large Corsair or a similar catheter and uh, uh, um, trying to uh, uh, see, explore that, that uh, vessel is worthwhile. The distal cap is not super evident uh, the, uh, from the uh, retrograde injection, and there is, of course, a very... Uh, tempting <laughs> septal collateral. However, uh, there is no uh, reason not to have something in the, in the proximal right coronary artery first. All right, so Alex, um, I think anti-grade preparation first would be a good choice, right? Yes. Yep, yeah, so I mean, absolutely. I mean, and I think, you know, most of us would agree that unless in, you know, in some extenuating circumstances, in almost every case, even if you are going to go with a retrograde strategy, you would do your anti-grade work first, right? It just decreases your whole retrograde time. So our strategy here was like, you know, it's probably 30, 40 millimeters long. Um, the blunt cap, as we said, is not like, you know, I mean, the proximal cap is not super blunt. We kind of think it's maybe we could see a little bit. There is a fair bit of calcium that we see. The distal landing zone is diseased. So a strategy is to start off with anti-grade wire escalation, see where it goes, not spend a whole lot of time. If it works, great. If not, try parallel wire briefly um, or flip go retro. And I think ADR is still an option. So we have all options on the table. Um, we started off with um, having, you know, we just just before we got, we had some discussion about this. Uh, we we got a guy just with a guide to to go, and it just backed everything out. So what we've done is, um, you know, put in a six French expressman, which is a guide extension catheter with side holes, which I'm just seeing and using for the first time, and an elong, which is a micro catheter. Apparently, we only have 150, so we are using 150 um, anti grade. And uh, yeah, and basically we have just managed to penetrate the proximal cap. That's where we are at now. So let's just go to the next picture, please. Can we, yeah. So next one. Next. Yeah, I think we, uh, next. Uh, yeah, we had a fluoro save. Yeah, next. No. Okay, so. Oh, we didn't. Uh, okay, uh, I guess we as did. It's, uh, it, it's a it's a team it's a teamwork. So I, we just advanced the the Elong micro catheter with a Gaia third, and Arun uh, work a little bit uh, with the Gaia and uh, just uh, succeed to puncture the proximal cap. And we are here now. Okay, waiting for you. So you, you can appreciate that we are just in the middle part of of this. So we will work with this Gaia. Uh, just uh, check if the, um, the support is enough, and then I will advance otherwise my micro catheter. So, so just just out of curiosity, like I mean, we kind of decided to go with this wire. Uh, what would be our initial wire of choice? Uh, I mean, panel. There's no panel. Oh, there is. Okay. Oh, the wise. We have, I forget the names. Okay, there is the a provoker. <laughs> well, we believe is is an obviously uh, uh, a good choice. Uh, I think it's, it's always difficult to predict uh, which will be the wire uh, successful in such a case. What you are helped from is the fact it's a five millimeter vessel. It's very difficult you go wrong in the sense that you completely go outside the vessel. So uh, you need. Uh, penetrative force, um, you need a balance uh, uh, avoiding uh, extreme uh, um, penetrating force like a stato, you, win, you want a steerable wire, Gaia said I think is a good choice. Uh, yeah, 
And and once you have penetrated and the microcatheter is in, now the big question is like, do you want to persist with this wire or do you want to take a polymer jacketed wire and like, you know, maybe like a gladius? So, or, so. you can see how I'll react the tip of the Gaia. So he, he wants to knuckle, he is against something uh, yeah. hard, he's not, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to direct it yeah. inside, but it's very difficult. So I yep. think in that case, a polymer gate wire yeah. will be my, my choice now. So okay. if you agree, we will take a Gladius. Gladius MG? Alexander. Gladius Alexander. MG, right? Yeah. I have yes. to ask you something. Because we are watching you uh, working this wire, and we have the, I have the feeling it's not as controllable as it should be. And so uh, we still have the basic decision. We have the basic decision to trust a knuckle or to try to palpate with the wire, which in this case, I think, is not so easy. Uh, and they have another question. You are going femoral. What is the reason for you not to go eight French and maybe to have more options later if it's not so easy down there and if you want to use Ivers? Uh, Okay, That's so first of, okay. first of all, all right. uh, I think I don't need eight French here uh, because uh, I, I, I will not do an IVUS puncture. And uh, if I'm using IVUS, it will be after crossing. Can we bring the IR and, uh, down a little bit? Seven French is enough. The IR, uh, bring it down. And also... Uh, Thank you. There is some, uh, ah. yeah, it's okay. We are in the architecture. Huh? Yep, yep. That's clearly, so, okay. So uh, the, there was also some issue with the puncture point, as you can, uh, you have seen, uh, there is some stenosis on the femoral and we, inside the stents. So that's why we, we try to, to stay, uh, a little bit uh, smaller than eight. Okay, so this is a Gladius MG. The yep. Good. Yeah, I, I'm just it's tracking the architecture of the vessel. And then they're full. Okay. But uh, tell us, tell so us what you feel and what we are ah. looking for right now in this situation. I see your Gladius uh, starting yeah. to go around, hopefully in the architecture of yes. the vessel, but I'm not so super sure about yeah. that. What, what are you looking for? It's what are you doing to make sure that you stay in the right plane? And why did you so, choose the Gladius uh, and not the, a, a larger knuckle? Oh, because for the moment, I want just to, to, to understand uh, maybe uh, the inside of the CTO. So when I, I choose the, 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 the Gladius, I know that my wire will go extra plaque. Most of the time, okay. So we we yeah. are around the vessel here. So the feeling is not so so clear you because store store. Save. We, yeah. with okay. this uh, kind of guide wire inside uh, extra plaque uh, space, uh, you you can't feel uh, a lot. But here I am some resistance also. So uh, there is two options. First option is to try to advance here just to understand then maybe advance a little bit more my micro catheter because here if i knuckle from the start i'm afraid that everything will will go out so maybe i will advance my micro catheter take the first turn and then go back and knuckle and that's why we used uh, the mg another ex uh, so i don't want to talk about the feel but one of the things that we are looking for i don't know if you guys can see it there are some staining as the wire was exiting so it pretty much tracked it another thing i mean stating the obvious is you know i mean obviously alex is super experienced and we have a couple of people here but it's always a good idea to get an orthogonal projection to make sure you're still tracking in the rca for those that are starting off or even for more experienced operators and sometimes you have good uh, you, you have good news with the gladius the gladius will go goes. through to true <laughs> so uh that's why i try not to knuckle at the first time but here obviously the gladius is around the vessel so my my, yep. uh, my point is here, take again back the Gaia, make to some directive yep. or go for a knuckle now and I, then go for the retro uh, strategy. I, what do you guys say? I, I think there is a fair bit of tortuosity there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. 
Uh, what we actually so? did see here, you started out with the Gaia. You palpated the area. You did take advantage of the fact that it, you could uh, puncture, like scratch the subintimal space. But what, what we have learned in school, we should trust the knuckle. We should start subintimally in a safe way, not risking to go. We don't have a lot of information about this proximal RCA. We don't know if there are any like bridging collateral islands that we don't see. So we have to make sure or tell the audience how to make sure that we do not mess up and go to small branches and have perforation. Uh, Alexander, if I can ask you a question. Yes. Um, you went directly with the, with the Gaia third because you felt that you needed to puncture. Um, I would have been tempted to go with something like an XTA first to see because at the end of your injection, there was almost a little rat's tail. And with a softer wire, you might have had a better chance of actually getting in the sort of plaque or in the true lumen rather than a hard wire that will then sort of puncture and you're more likely to get um, um, uh, yeah, okay, but I can understand your point of view, but uh, I'm, very, I'm, I'm quite very confident uh, with, uh, with the Gaia third and my uh, tactile uh, feedback is good with this uh, guide wire and I, I can know that if I am uh, intra or extra plaque or uh, so, f f uh, we, we I think it was a discussion. Okay. Uh, go, should we go? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Alexandra, it's not that we, tr we we fully trust your experience, and I would like to be your patient any time. So, it's <laughs> not about your, uh, your skills. But we do have a question from Aurel Thoma. Yes, one question. Is this the first curve with, that you did it with uh, Gladys, and you follow with microcatheter? Do you think it will be oh, yes. a little bit dangerous after it's to nice. stand that? Yeah. It's coming more... I, I didn't understand, sorry. Again? Because Arun it? is also uh, <laughs> working. So, so could you repeat, Aurel? Sorry. Yeah, we have two, I have two questions. So the first question is about the curve that, it's, uh, that you passed now with microcatheter and with the glass. Do you think it's not the outer curve too much and it will be a problem after you're standing? No. And the second question is, if it's the ultimate better to navigate instead of Gaia when you make a knuckle, so it's a, a big loop, and I don't know if you have a good control of uh, Gaia in this big space. No, it's, a, 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 the, the loop is not uh, from the Gaia, the loop it's is... It's a MG. It's a MG. No, no, of course, but after, if you, but if you want to, to use Gaia, do we have a good uh, control of Gaia in this big space, or it's better to use Ultimate or whatever different? Wires. No, sh for sure. The Gaia, uh, I, I will have no control of the Gaia in this big space, but the Gaia will go for uh, maybe deeper and then across the flap uh, if I use it. So then I will have again a good control of the Gaia. We got so another maybe we question. can do a retrograde We got one short. more question yep. here. Hi. Yeah. Please, please. Hi, Alex. Hi, Aaron. It's Yasser Sadok. Uh, so now you uh, you did some knuckling anti-gradely. So why you, this is I think the perfect time to start retrogradely and to solve the uh, issue of architecture of the artery anti-gradely. So I think it's uh, yeah I I think you have to start retrograde now. Well, yes, yep, but that's well, why we, we took a retrograde show to be sure that we are uh, just in front of the, the distal cap and not uh, after the distal cap, okay? Uh, Alex, so, Stefan, uh, here, yeah, listen Alex. To, yes, Stefan, yes, You're, what is your option here? You're among, you have all the options here. It's all a question at this point, yeah, it's all a question of <clears throat> what are your skill sets? What are you able to do? And what is the lowest risk for that patient? And here, we've, right. we have many, many studies that have shown that it, it's not dependent on what you do any grade, that it's actually when you go retrograde, you increase the risk for the patient. So here, if you have an option to solve this case any grade, the data would suggest, would support that you should try any grade. And an experienced uh, operator like you, seasoned with ADR, is certainly uh, appealed to sort of move and get more distal. So at this point, I heard right away people saying, stop there and start working retrograde. 
you've made, a, you've, ga- you've made it too far out in your algorithm. You should be stopping at this point and think about everything, perspective evaluation of your risks. And that is very important. And I hear, uh, I would like to hear, you know, Aaron and Alex at this point taking all this information, what are they considering and what, would, what will be the next step? Yeah. I disagree. They, yeah, it's very Stefan. important. What do you no. say? And no, Alex. What you say? And for us, I, I disagree. <laughs> yes, go ahead. No, why I disagree? Why I disagree is because the the retrograde is not uh, in terms adverse outcome based on the retrograde approach. It's because we fail and the grade, then we go retrograde. Fail and degrade, exactly. Because those are the more complex cases. So you are, you, you, the comparison is not fair. You're comparing GCTO score and average of 3.1 to 2.2. And for sure, those with a higher GCTO score, higher calcification, higher tutorcity, are more complex in terms of also comorbidity, everything. We have confounders as well. Of course, and, of and, course. And, and, and so, so it's not because you passed the septal that you harm the patient here. That's not true. But if he go and the grade knuckles down and stingray fails, let's put it in this way, it's because the anatomy is more complex. Yeah. So then he has to go... I have retro- a question for you. Yeah. How can you have a donor artery thrombosis with retrograde? How can we'll, you have a donor artery we'll dissection it, we'll with retrograde? retrograde? How can you have a septal perforation with hematoma wait, wait. retrograde? Let, How can you, uh, you cannot let, have let, anything of this let, anyway. let me answer, Stefan. You have the retrograde thrombosis because you have a retrograde guide and you don't control your ACT, no matter if you are working anti-grade or retrograde. Let's take out the skills and everything of the, uh, of the doctor and everything. The, skills. the more you're doing, <laughs> the more you're instrumenting this artery, the higher are the complications yeah okay uh, okay guys so w- 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 I-, I agree with both of you okay because you're my friend <laughs> and, and, but here the point is I-, I don't know if we can back to the last one yeah uh, what we w- what for me make me choose the next strategy is the size of the knuckle La- yeah. Because it's a Gladius MG, it's supposed to to, uh, to be a very small knuckle. And here, uh, I think that if I push down uh, more this knuckle, it will be, uh, the space will be too large to use uh, straight after the, uh, the, the stingray. So, uh, and the, there is some, some disease at this part, and I don't want to lose the visualization of the distal cap so that's why um, I, I'm going retro because there is also uh, very beautiful collaterals but it seems to be beautiful but it's a, a little bit torturous also so if I have any trouble to go through this collateral I will go back for your strategy hey, Alex uh, and Stephen. Alex yeah, we have one of the we have few of the best operators of ADR in the in the room Bill Nicholson is here. I want to hear what you, uh, Bill, uh, what are the issues with ADR and what is the future of how we could solve ADR to be more efficient? Because they've raised very good, very good comments and, and failure modes and, and Bill, you're so experienced and you're so an innovator and an inventor and we will soon see a solution to that problem that you invented. But I want you to hear, to, to comment on this. Yeah, um, well, first of all, that's very polite what you just said, but uh, to, to me, this case is a anti grade dissection reentry with Stingray 100 out of 100 times. I mean, you've got a knuckle there. <laughs> we don't know how big that knuckle is going to be when you push it downstream. It's probably going to tighten up, and I think Stingray would be very successful here. Um, the big issue, as they alluded to, is pushing the knuckle downstream is you're going to get a hematoma. You're going to lose visualization. You may be a decent distance from where you want to do your targeted reentry. Uh, we have a device coming out that's going to uh, um, uh, combine aspiration at the same time. So it's a microcatheter that will be able to aspirate the hematoma simultaneously while you can redirect the wire. And so you're going to be able to basically uh, re-expand the target vessel downstream that usually gets collapsed by the hematoma. And I think with uh, little or no uh, added skill, uh, technically uh, be able to re-enter uh, on a reliable basis. So I think 
left. The future of CTO PCI for me is going to be people getting comfortable with knuckling and navigating the subintimal space and less with doing retrograde and less with doing reentry because I think we're going to overcome that shortly in the next year. So I think uh, they've already done that part very nicely and I think they've got themselves, to me they're in a winning situation. This is a, a this is downstream stingray done. I mean, but you can, you can go retrograde, and what Canvas was alluding to is definitely true. We looked at that with OpenCTO as well, what he's alluding to that, uh, I said the same thing, that when you pass a wire into the septal channel, it's because you're struggling to integrate and you already had uh, complications or difficulty. Uh, if you look at the cases that started retrograde and finished retrograde, so we said I'm doing this retrograde up front and I'm not going to do anything integrate. The guy said the same thing, I said the complication rates, you give it to me, give it to you, give it to people that have done a thousand plus uh, retrogrades, that uh, the complication rates won't be higher because we started retrograde, it's still four times higher. So, uh, so, so, so Bill, the, the re-entry chance is very high, right? Antigrade here, yeah, yeah very, very yeah. high. Uh, vice versa, in te uh, terms of technical uh, um, thing, the, the retrograde septal is not as straightforward, right? I agree. I when you go easy, to the technical aspect of the case, it's not as easy of a septal to cross as maybe it's being talked about. Yeah. So the device coming up can aspirate, and you have m multiple side ports where you can puncture through, right? So there's six side ports, and it's a three French uh, catheter, so you can fit two wires through it. So if you wanted a parallel wire, you could, but the bigger thing is that you can manipulate a wire while you aspirate at the same time. And then you make multiple sticks and. and, and f all, all the six side ports or, or, or just uh, <laughs> no, it, the catheter itself actually uh, the way it's designed the exit ports uh, have an X shape to it and so if there's an X there it comes out left or right just like we know with the stingray and so you just basically re retrograde shoot a picture you see the, the uh, vessel sitting next to it whichever port has an X you go that's the case right there it's a beautiful, beautiful case but I mean you know I think this is a definitely in the future a fast integrate case all right thanks I like it's well done um, Arun sure. let's We've go for you because you don't know this mic yeah, yeah, it. I want you fun. to try Thank it you. appreciate that <laughs> okay, guys, okay. we've seen that you've thanks. crossed uh, that was a good demonstration of how to go retrogradely but I think just to go back a little bit I think We've had a lot of discussion, but at the end of the day, it also comes down to the skill set and what the operator wants to use. And here we've had a perfect example of that. Um, that's, that was his plan, and that's what he's executed, and he's executed it quite excellently. Um, we're going to leave you now, and we're going to go back to our first case because they've made some progress there. Yes, exactly, Alex, you got it. So could you show what happened? We had a lot of discussion. We had a great discussion here on IVOS, non-IVOS, and a great case. So uh, now please uh, explain what happened. We saw you passing the septal in a very nice way and then having some time for reverse cart. So, so how, did you, how did you get the connection? <coughs> Wait. By reverse cart. Guide extension. Okay, guys. Okay. We saw that. Okay, so this is uh, the point where we we were. So we, we work with uh, Elong micro catheter, so 150. It was uh, quite easy to, to cross. I let Arun working on that because he... he, he I've never used it before. He doesn't know the, yeah. the device. Uh, and so we, we are still with a Scion Black retrogradely, and you can see we, the, uh, Arun was able to, to manage uh, the Scion Black until this part. So when we, we advance the microcatheter, next. Next, please. please. And uh, we, we decide to, to perform a reverse card technique. So we add already the, the extension of guiding catheter, which is uh, Expressman. Expressman is a special extension of guiding catheter because is, there is a side all here. But so for the CTO, it's not mandatory, but for a complex PCI, it's a real must to have this kind of uh, um, uh, side all because then you can intubate your, your extension deep inside a lady, deep inside RCA, and there is still pressure, no ischemic for the patient and uh, no thrombus inside, so it's uh, a very, uh, very interesting. Yep. So we just uh, advance our uh, extension of guiding catheter with, uh, this is Sapphire Balloon, we start with a 2.5, uh, 2.0 first, and then 2.5 yeah. uh, Sapphire Balloon, 
And then we tried the Revion 3 with the Scion Black. It was not successful. So then we try with Gaia a Gaia third. Uh, it was not successful, very close, but not. So we, we move. It was a four end work. Yes. One is uh, working with the guide wire. The other one is just moving the extension of guiding catheter to, to, to find the, the, the great place where we can have our rendezvous. So uh, then we exchange for uh, Gladius. <laughs> EX. X. And then we, we can succeed. Uh, then we advance. Next one, please. The yeah. micro. Uh, the, yeah. And then we exchange for uh, ARG3. Free. Free. Next. So we did some predilatation and we did some uh, IVES. Oh, and Alexander. Chadi, uh, Gaffari. Alexander, yeah. what I see is that you did something that uh, we have seen one or two years ago from Stefan, putting a wire in the aortic root. Yes, yeah. I will yes. tell you this after. Yeah, ah. okay. Uh, you know, we are learning every day. And Stefan, uh, last time, he, he, he told me uh, these uh, tips and tricks. And I share it in uh, one of uh, episode of Alex and Friends. So uh, it's a dedicate to Stefan. Uh, it, it means that when you need to uh, pulling back your more retrograde microcatheter, you know that the, the danger is uh, to intubate too much your uh, left guiding into the left main. So to avoid this, Stefan told me, yes, just place a workhorse guide wire inside the aorta. And then you can pull back your, uh, your micro catheter and uh, then the left guiding catheter will not intubate inside the left man. And it's really a, a very, very good, good tips. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, yep. uh, it's great to have uh, new, new, new things like this. Small things, but yeah. very useful. Yeah. I agree. So maybe Shadi will uh, will show you the, yeah, I, um, the first Ivus, please, yeah. Shadi. Can can you hear me? Yeah. Can we see the Ivus full screen? Uh, yeah, you can, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah. We can see the Ivus on full screen. We are ready. Yeah, All great. right, great. So it's a very interesting Ivus pullback uh, in the distal RCA. It's a relatively small. Uh, uh, vessel 2.5, 2.75 with some calcifications and they went in and out, intra and extra plaque, or, which is normal, which is expected, with a nice uh, hematoma, we're going to get to that in a few seconds right, uh, right here. So it's a, there's a small hematoma at 6 o'clock. So all the way they were going in and out of the plaque. Uh, we're going back, but on on the proximal part, it, the the vessel the vessel becomes a bit bigger, up to four millimeters. And uh, after that, I'm gonna give my mic back to Arun. So you see what we've done till, till now. So uh, after that, uh, we, we just uh, place our stain. So it's uh, the first okay. set was uh, 2.75, ah, 38. Uh, yes. Alex, sorry to interrupt you. Did you get any additional information? Because we just had this Ivers debate. Did this give you any additional information for your standing? Uh, for me, it's just avoid me to inject integrally to see clearly the size of the vessel. And the landing zone. Because, and the, the landing, landing zone, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, but uh, otherwise, I really don't care if I'm in or out, only for a sing if you want, song if you want, but uh, I'm in, uh, I'm out, but yeah. <laughs> So, uh, no, it's only for, for this, um, this diameter. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, if you, 
no, so we decided 2.75 for the distal, uh, 38. It was an Nagomi stand. And then we use so a second stand, a 50. Three it's a Nagomi yeah. 3550. And this, with this, we, we were able to use only two stent. So it was oh. good. I like long stent. It's an economic uh, indication, yeah. but... Yep. Uh, it's also better for the patient. So we, we, we get with uh, high atmosphere, then we did again uh, uh, Ivus and Shadi uh, show us that in uh, some part there was some um, malaposition mal of some stent, of some strut. So he will explain you mm -hmm. how he can see that there is malaposition of some strut. I think it's very educative. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, we, we just go post dilate and show you the, the final result. Yeah. You, you, you dilated? So did you already do the post dilatation or, or could you just give us a quick... Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, we are uh, quick, doing now the doing post dilatation. Yeah. Because we're one, a little bit late on time. Could you just give us one... one to show the, yeah. show the IVIS. One, uh, one, one, two, yeah, three, yeah. four. Yeah, we will show you uh, the IVIS and then the final result, uh, and then uh, we are done. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. this is a, a so guys, three point five NC or four. four yes, yeah, Sapphire three point five non-compliant uh, twenty eight. Okay. Okay, perfect. So we, we will show you now the, the final. Great. And uh, if you have time, Shadi, can you explain to you uh, how we can see that there is some, uh, some uh, stent mala position, but I don't know if you have time. So looking at these results and the IVOS, don't you think that uh, in uh, IDR could have been much more difficult with that uh, large hematoma? I think so. And maybe there. one point uh, to raise. I mean, they, they rightly inserted the guide extension to prevent blood from flowing down, but maybe the wrong one because this uh, express uh, uh, gu I mean, uh, guide extension, I understand, has yeah. a side hole that allows pressure to go distal. That's maybe well, not ideal in this particular scenario. It was quite scenario. Diff diffuse yeah. disease distally, but well, I mean, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Alex, are we, because I think coffee breaks almost So I think that's a great, great result. Um, so thank you very much. Yeah, thanks to I'm everyone. I'm sure you're going to Iverstead Distillery. And Arun. Unfortunately, you missed a great session, yeah. Alex, here. You have to watch it on VOD. And we'll be back here at 11.15. Thank you very much. So RG3 until this point. You see? Okay. And then now, micro. Because if there is anything on the septal, I can go back with my micro and just deploy the coil. Is not in there. Okay, so no problem in our septal, so then I can remove everything. Okay, and we will do a final shot for the, for the right, so I'm going to do the same thing on That's good. Nice. Okay, looking good. Strong work. Yeah. Uh, on est toujours à l'écran, mais alors. Uh... <laughs> good. <Thank you. laughs>